Hey everybody, Eddie over at Eddie's Cardboard Chaos is running a VR right now, um, and the object of this VR, or the discussion point, is to talk about um, athletes who have overcome tremendous odds. Um, a lot of um, athletes have overcome serious physical ailments, um, injuries. Um, you know, I always think of Jim Abbott as, as the guy who always comes to mind, who was pitched kind of in my generation uh, with one hand, which I thought was amazing and weird as a kid. Um, but, you know, um, there have been a ton. There have been a ton of stories out there, and it's really a human interest story. Mine is going to be a little different, I think, and I don't know if it's going to uh, exclude me, and if it does, that's fine too. Um, this is just for fun anyway, right? But I am going to talk about uh, Pele. So he was at the top of my mind since he just passed away a few weeks ago. And although I'm not a huge soccer fan, my wife and my wife's family, they are. Um, and so soccer has been, has become part of my life, at least to a certain extent, where it was almost none except for playing FIFA and uh, turning it into drinking games in uh, college. So besides that, uh, no, no, no real soccer in my history. But uh, Pele is pretty special. But I thought I would do a little different, and I thought I would show you off some of our Pele memorabilia while I kind of ramble on a little bit about the man, the myth, the legend, uh, as opposed to just talking about the stats. Hey, everybody. I just did a 25-minute synopsis on why I feel Pele should be in this discussion and realized that nobody's going to want to listen to that. So I'm going to give you the abridged version instead. Um, one... Pele grew up dirt poor. Uh, father was an ex-professional athlete, footballer, who got hurt. Um, he was so poor that he um, didn't have shoes until he was 11. And, and those shoes were given to him by a football club. He was so poor that he made soccer balls out of um, socks. He would put like... Um, newspapers and cloth inside of a giant sock and then sew it so it was perfectly round and that's what he played with. Pele's name's not actually Pele, it's Edson. Uh, he's got a longer name, but I can't pronounce it. Um, so overcoming uh, extreme poverty, um, he also faced quite a bit of racism and helped to alleviate the race racism um, when he finally got picked up by a professional club and then later put on the national team. The national team at that time did not allow more than one black player to be on the pitch at, at any time because black players were thought to be inferior. Um, when they went to the first World Cup in Sweden, the coach didn't want to play Pele, um, and then the the other athletes forced him to, basically forced his hand. And then Pele went in there, and the rest is history. So Pele went in and crushed everybody. Um, after they won their World Cup, they went back home, and the rule against only one black player on the pitch at a time uh, was eliminated. Um, also during that time, they would give the black players um, ground-up rice to put on their face so they could pa pass as white. Um, so extreme poverty, racism, uh, his government, um, did not allow him to go play in Europe. They said he was a national treasure and wouldn't let him go. Um, the government changed while Pele was coming into his own. Um, and so he had to deal with the dictators and the politics. Um, and there was quite a bit of it. They were doing some pretty terrible things. He tried to retire and the dictators forced him out of retirement and he was essentially forced to play in that last World Cup, which was his fourth World Cup. The fact that he won three World Cups and had something insane, like 120 hat tricks in his career. I think he had like 1,200 goals. Um, it was pretty amazing. At one point, he was the highest paid athlete in the world and was, was one of the first athletes to try to brand himself and really um, use himself to turn into a business. Pele was um, not very well educated, being that he grew up so poor and um, basically started working when he was 11. He put some bad managers in charge of his stuff and he went bankrupt.
after he went bankrupt the first time, um, it was his soccer club that bailed him out. But when they did that, they forced him to sign a pretty terrible contract. He took a big pay cut for two years, and then the third year he had to play for free. So he dug out of that hole and um, started making some money again and then started another business, um, which also failed. He, fa he went to bankruptcy again, and this time the United States um, bailed him out. He came to New York and played for the Cosmos. When he came to America, he really spread the game through through our country. Um, but before that, he was barnstorming in Europe, in addition to all the World Cups. You know, he was the most famous athlete in the world during a time where most people didn't have TVs or they had black and white TVs, and it was way before the internet. I know that there's lots of controversy around Pele. Um, a lot of people wanted him to do more and speak up more against the government. Um, he was not a good dad, uh, had a couple marriages, had lots of babies outside his marriage. Um, I think his children would all say he was an absentee father. Um, but we're not talking about Pele the man, we're talking about Pele the athlete today. And for somebody to come from such humble beginnings to being the largest athlete in the world, I think is pretty neat. So that's it for my little VR. Um, just wanted to spotlight uh, somebody who we, we already knew. We already knew his face. We already knew his name. Um, but we might not know how much he actually had to overcome. And, uh, you know, wanted just to give a quick RIP to the king. Thanks for watching.